I was like, I'll gladly do the laundry if that's all I have to do. This video is brought to you by the Apiary Fund. The Apiary Fund is a company that will teach you how to trade from no knowledge to limited knowledge to a point where you are able to trade in a funded account and make profits on your own. To learn more about the Apiary Fund and to join for yourself, you can click on the link in the description. Hello traders, and today we're going to be talking about standard deviations, which is commonly abbreviated STD-DEV. Standard deviations are a volatility indicator and very similar to the fractal indicator, which we've previously discussed. And I'll leave a link at the end of this video to watch that fractals video if you're interested. Uh, but they're not, the standard deviation isn't an enter here or exit here model indicator like some other ones. What the standard deviation does is it shows you areas where we have really large and sort of vast differences between our market price and moving averages, which are points where we may want to look at uh, potential reversals coming up. And it also shows us these low volatility areas where we may be looking for a volatility spike soon. Now, before we get into the calculation for the standard deviation, uh, there's a few important things to note in the calculation. It uses three different Greek letters, two of which are sigma, one is lowercase and one is uppercase, and another one is mu. The first of these Greek symbols is a lowercase sigma. The lowercase sigma looks like the letter O with a hat brim going off to one side of it, and this notates standard deviation. The second Greek character to note is a capital sigma. This capital sigma looks like a capital letter E. However, instead of being a straight line on the left, it makes it all sort of just straight lines going from top, then to the middle, then to the bottom, and then the line sticking out on the bottom. That is a summation. So that's taking the sum of all of the different numbers from point one all the way to point X, whatever that may be. In this case, whatever we're looking for as our period, will be the farthest back of the sigma summation. That final letter is the mu, which looks like a U with a long tail on the left side and the normal tail on the right side of the character. This character, or the mu, is your average or your mean of a set of data points. Now, what is a standard deviation? A standard deviation is the standard amount that a price deviates from, in this case, a simple moving average. You can use different types of moving averages for your standard deviation, but no matter which one you use, no matter which price type you use, what the standard deviation is, is how much variance we have from, let's say, our price close to a simple moving average of price close, or our price open from our moving average of our price open. What this really notates is if we have really big fluctuations away from our moving average or if we're hovering really close to our moving average. So now for the actual calculation part of your standard deviation. The first part of finding your standard deviation is to be finding your mu or your average. So to do that, you'll take typically the price close is what your standard deviation is based off of. Find the price close for your period amount of candles add those all together and divide by your period again. This will give you your average price close over that set period of time. From there, we'll take the price close of each individual candle and subtract it from our mu or our mean price that we've calculated. Once we have all, once we've subtracted the mu from our price close, we're going to square that value. From there, we'll take the summation or that capital sigma from the most recent candle all the way to the nth candle, and we'll take the sum of all of those and take the average of that by dividing by n at that point. Once we've divided by n, we'll then take the square root, which will give us the sigma or the standard deviation of that specific candle. So in short, the sigma or standard deviation equals the square root of sigma from one to n of price close minus your mu, all divided by n. So now when do we really enter and exit out of these trades with the standard deviation? Similar to what we previously stated is that the standard deviation, when it reaches a high or a peak or an area of high resistance on the indicator, 
we're commonly coming up to a period where we're not going to be deviating from that price as much and that the price is going to start going right back down to that moving average or right back up to the moving average depending on if we're in a more bearish or bullish market. So as we start to come across those resistance points on that standard deviation indicator, it's about time that we should really start looking to get out of our trades. Alternatively, periods where we have a really low or we've been in a low standard deviation for a prolonged period of time is really indicating that we're about ready for a breakout to occur in some sort of direction. Standard deviation doesn't let us know if it's gonna be a bullish or a bearish break. All it lets us know is We've been riding this moving average for so long that we're about due for a time where we're gonna start going bullish or bearish in a rather excessive movement away from our moving averages. So to recap that last section, our standard deviation isn't giving us buy signals, sell signals, or close signals, but it's pointing out areas to start watching for those closes or for those entries. Indicators are nowhere near as powerful as candlestick patterns when it comes to entry or exit points. And so standard deviation really tells us when we should start looking. Areas of prolonged high standard deviation values or areas of high resistance on standard deviation are areas where it's telling us to watch for those reversal candles. Those areas, the candlestick patterns are less likely to be pullbacks and more likely to be those full-fledged reversals. Same thing with those entries. Areas where the standard deviation has prolonged time on the lower side of the scale, we are more likely to sooner have a breakout in the bullish or bearish direction. Standard deviation doesn't tell us bullish or bearish, but it tells us to start watching for a candlestick formation to let us know if it's bullish or bearish. We also have a great video on learning how to trade those candlestick patterns, along with our head trader's favorite candlestick patterns to trade, which I'll throw on the end of this video along with the fractal indicator video as well. If you'd like to use the standard deviation in your trading to add it onto your Alvio platform, which is the Apiary Funds customized trading platform, you'll go into the top right of the chart, click on the indicator icon, which looks like two line charts overlapping, find the STD DEV or standard deviation indicator, select your period, confirm, and it will be on your chart for trading. Otherwise, if you're using a different platform other than Alvio, you'll find wherever you add on your indicators, find the standard deviation, adjust your period to your liking, confirm, and it should be on your chart there as well. To gain access to the Apiary Funds classes, which include much more in-depth strategies and more in-depth indicator research than we cover here, click on the link below to get your free 30-day trial and get started with the Apiary Fund today. Our goal at the Apiary Fund is to release these trading tips every Tuesday. These trading tips cover indicators and strategies that we'd like you guys to be able to use in your trading. So if you like these videos, let us know by clicking like or putting comments and subscribing so that way we can see what videos you'd like to see released and you'll be subscribed so you'll know when we release these videos every Tuesday. Thank you guys and happy trading.